Assalamu alaikum. My name is Imran Khan. I'm a recent graduate of the Online Islamic Psychology Diploma at Cambridge Muslim College. I wanted to talk about trauma within the Muslim community and how the Islamic tradition can be used to really engage with the idea of Islam as a source of healing because we find many Muslim communities are not immune to uh, suffering psychological stresses and strains and issues and many of us have dealt with trauma have really experienced deep trauma along with just being in the world modern life really makes maintaining your spiritual and mental well-being a challenge and of course the Islamic tradition is a treasure it is the ultimate source of guidance and healing but we often find a, a difficulty in really accessing it in the language in the context that we understand and many of us despite realizing that we have problems and want to engage with our traumas that we can't connect to the tradition and Islamic psychology really allows us to understand the idea of the self from the Islamic tradition um, that is rooted within the Quran and the prophetic tradition and it's able to make us understand that um, in the language that we understand and and it means that we can we can actually have a, a more of a holistic approach to healing that is rooted within the, uh, the Islamic paradigm. And what's fundamental about this approach, that it centers your perception within the heart. And again, that is principally what we understand from the Islamic tradition. Verily, they have hearts, do they not perceive with? as it says in the Qur'an and just having that understanding is completely life-changing it, it centers us more in our heart rather than our heads and it makes us more in tune with our surroundings the, the eye, you know, and, and that has the potential for us to be more open to, to Allah's signs in creation Edward Krantz is a famous philosopher who describes this term ontological continuity where there's a continuum between the what we experience out in the outside world and within ourselves and what he argues is that um, in modern times we've created a separation between that so what we experience in our heads and our physical being is separate to what we experience um, in the in the world and you know, and that uh, doesn't make us makes us less in tune with with our environment. And it is said, whoever knows themselves knows Allah. So, with the understanding, the greater understanding of the self, we know more about the reality of ourself, and we know about more about the reality of of life, and that draws us closer closer to the ultimate reality, which is Allah. Trauma can also be like a black hole. Physicists would describe a black hole sucking up all the light that's around it. All the matter goes into this empty black hole. And, and often we find ourselves faced with a decision once we do realize um, those blocks and the pain that that our trauma has has inflicted upon us and physicists also describe a black hole going through a black hole as something that's completely unknown that we don't know what happens when we go through that black hole we may understand things differently or a different perception of reality the British physicist Stephen Hawkins once said if you find yourself in a black hole keep going and 
and once if we consider that if we actually cross through that black hole we we're essentially trusting the process we're submitting and allowing ourselves to get into pass into this metaphysical reality this uh, almost akin to submitting ourselves to Allah's will and we and we may understand things differently And it gives us a greater awareness, a consciousness of things that could really be able to help understand our, our situation that Allah has put us in. In Surah Al-Taqweer, Allah describes the cataclysmic events that happens towards the end of time. إِذَا الشَّمْسُ كُوِّرَتْ وَإِذَا النُّجُومُ كَدَرَتْ in the commentary of Ibn Ajiba, he describes these events as being a an internal. Uh, he describes these more more psychological terms. For example, um, the sun being a metaphor for the for the ego. So, once the the sun is overthrown or folded, your ego is being come conquered. Um, when the light, when the stars fade, means those aspirations of dunya are no longer your aspirations in life. When the mountains uh, move, the jibal um, your your mountains of your ego, your mountains of ego are uh, move away. It is also understood more contemporaneously that these verses also describe a crisis that is happening within us a state of anxiety and flux which which often you find when when going through or realizing your traumas and the sun represents the light that once that was in your life if that if that becomes unfolded and the stars your forms of direction in life fade and the mountains, the things that actually hold you firm in ground, start to move away. It uh, just describes a state of flux. And further down the, the surah, Allah says, فَإِنَ تَذْهَبُونَ You know, where are you going? You know, and it calls us back to the, uh, you know, to, to, to the remembrance of Allah. And because that is our main anchor of of guidance. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you for learning with us. At Cambridge Muslim College, we are raising the standard of Muslim scholarship through talks like these, but also through our certified academic programs. We're training our students to speak to our times and to meet the needs of our communities. But we can't do this without your help. Whether it's zakat, a one off donation, or a regular contribution, your gift will help us educate more students, elevate new leaders, and illuminate entire communities for generations to come.